In the last lecture, we were discussing causality, and then we have seen that the commutator phi of x, phi of y vanishes when x and y are space like with respect to each other. We have also found an integral representation for the commutator. We, we have seen that the commutator phi of x, phi of y is a C number, it is a commuting number and hence this is also equal to the vacuum expectation value of itself, phi of x, phi of y, <coughs> where we normalize the vacuum such that it is unit norm. Then we have seen that if x0 is greater than y0, then this vacuum expectation value is the retarded Green's function for the klein gordon operator. So, to be more specific, what we have seen in the last lecture is that integral d4 k divided by 2 pi 4 i divided by k square minus m square e to the power minus i k dot x minus y is equal to theta of x 0 minus y 0 times the vacuum expectation <coughs> value of commutator of phi of x and phi of y, where this k 0 integration here is evaluated on the contour which is taken like this. This is the origin, this is minus omega, this is plus omega or equivalently we can use the epsilon prescription and then we can evaluate this integration by considering limit epsilon goes to 0 plus integration of d cube x d cube k over 2 pi cube d k 0 over 2 pi and i divided by k 0 plus i epsilon square minus omega square e to the power minus i k dot x minus y. So, you can consider this integration, you can evaluate it and then what we, have, what, what we saw in the last lecture is that when we evaluate the k 0 integration, this turns out to be equal to this expression. Today, we will discuss uh, uh, some more of it. Uh, Let us consider two points x and y such that x 0 is greater than y 0. So, in this case, you can talk about a particle propagating from this space time point y from the point y at time y 0 to the point to the space time point x which is x to x 0. And the question that you might ask is what is the amplitude for propagation of this particle at space time point y at time y 0 to 
the point x at time x 0. This is what you can ask when x 0 is a later time than y 0. And what is the amplitude for this propagation? The amplitude for this propagation is phi of x phi of y vacuum expectation value. Remember phi of y has two components which uh, it has one positive frequency component, one negative frequency component. So, phi of I x, phi of y especially acting on the vacuum will describe the, we can loosely call this to be y, the positive frequency components will annihilate the vacuum and the negative frequency components will uh, act on the vacuum to create a particle at, at y. So, the amplitude for propagation from y to x is given by this quantity. Similarly, if instead x 0 is less than y 0, then you can talk about propagation of the particle from x x 0 to y y 0. And the amplitude for propagation in this case is going to be phi of y phi of x 0. So, instead of talking about whether uh, x 0 is greater than y 0 or x 0 is less than y 0, we can put the entire thing together by introducing what is known as time ordering. So, time ordered product of two observables phi of x, phi of y is given by phi of x, phi of y if x 0 is greater than y 0 and this is equal to phi of y phi of x if y 0 is greater than x 0. Equivalently, this time ordered product is also equal to theta of x 0 minus y 0 phi of x phi of y plus theta of y 0 minus x 0 phi of y phi of x, where theta is the step function. So, obviously, if x 0 is greater than y 0, this term survives and the time ordered product is equal to phi x times phi of y, whereas if y 0 is greater than x 0, the first term vanishes and the second term survives and hence the time order product is phi of y times phi of x. We can evaluate the vacuum expectation value of time ordered product that will describe the propagation of particle from x to y or y to x. The vacuum expectation value of time ordered product of phi of x phi of y. We have already evaluated what is the vacuum expectation value of phi of x phi of y. So, you can substitute it here and it so happens that this also can be represented as a Green's function of the klein gordon operator and this is equal to integral d 4 k over 2 pi to the power 4.
okay so in the limit epsilon tends to 0 plus this is known as the Feynman propagator and this is represented by g f x minus y. It is straightforward to evaluate uh, this the k 0 integration here. You have to remember that this integration in the limit epsilon tends to 0 plus is also equal to <coughs> limit epsilon tends to 0 plus d 4 k over 2 pi to the power fourth i divided by k 0 square minus omega square plus i epsilon e to the power minus i k dot x minus y and here you can write it as i over k 0 square minus omega minus i epsilon over 2 whole square in the limit epsilon test to 0 you can ignore all the terms of order epsilon square in the denominator and then to linear order in epsilon this the denominator here is equal to the denominator <coughs> here therefore both these are same so what's the point here what happens is you can again evaluate the the k0 integration here only thing is that the pole is shifted if this is the origin and suppose this is plus omega and this is minus omega then here the pole is shifted downwards because uh, k0 equal to omega minus i epsilon uh, over 2 is, uh, uh, is the pole and here the pole is shifted upwards. So, if x0 minus y0 is greater than 0 then this pole here will contribute you can close it downwards and this one is going to contribute whereas if x0 minus y0 is less than 0 then you can close the upper half semicircle semicircle in the upper half plane and this pole is not going to contribute this is the one which is going to contribute to the contour integration this is the way you can evaluate and then you can show that this in fact so one of these terms will give you theta x0 minus y0 so this first term is the one which will give you theta x0 minus y0 time order product of sorry vacuum expectation value of phi x phi y whereas the second one when you close the contour in the upper half plane is going to give a term which is theta y0 minus x0 vacuum expectation value of phi of y phi of x and uh, residue theorem says that this integration is uh, actually sum of the contribution from both these terms so that way you can have uh, this okay so so i leave it as a uh, as an exercise for you to evaluate this and then show that this is equal to the vacuum expectation value of time order product of phi of x and phi of y okay okay so with this we will close our discussion on real klein gordon field we can now discuss about the complex klein gordon field most of the analysis in this case are quite similar to the real case so i will 
omit most of the steps and then uh, uh, summarize the main results uh, in the uh, uh, quantization of a complex klein gordon field. The Lagrangian density for the system is given by del mu phi dagger del mu phi minus <coughs> m square phi dagger phi. Phi dagger is the Hermitian conjugate of phi and uh, clearly phi and phi dagger are linearly independent. You can treat them as two independent fields. The equation of motion is obtained by using the Euler Lagrange equation, which is del L over del phi minus del mu of del L over del del mu phi equal to 0, and uh, this will give you. Similar equation for phi dagger. Okay. So, let us consider the phi dagger equation del L over del phi dagger is minus m square phi and uh, this one here del del mu phi dagger is del mu phi. When you substitute these two in the klein gordon equation, you see that you get del mu del mu phi plus m square phi equal to 0. Similarly, the Hermitian conjugate of this equation, which is del mu del mu phi dagger plus m square phi dagger equal to 0. These are the equations of motion. You can find the plane wave solution to the equations of motion and then the conjugate momentum which is pi phi conjugate momentum to the field phi is del L <coughs> over del del 0 phi, whereas pi phi dagger the conjugate uh, momentum to the field phi dagger is del L over del del 0 phi dagger. So, this one we have already evaluated is del 0 phi, you can show that this is del 0 phi dagger. Okay. So, del 0 phi dagger. So, the equal time commutation relations as in the real case are given by if you look at this phi of x t pi phi of x t equal to i delta x prime t x minus x prime and a corresponding equation for phi dagger and uh, 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 pi phi dagger and then all other commutators are 0 phi of x t phi of x prime t equal to 0 equal to pi phi of x t pi phi of x prime t and so on. This equation 
can be written as phi of x t phi dagger dot of x t x prime t is i delta x minus x prime. <coughs> We can find the most general solution in terms of the plane wave solutions and uh, this is this can be written as phi of x is again just like the real Klein Gordon case this is d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega for convenience and to make the integration measure Lorentz invariant then a k e to the power minus i k dot x plus b dagger k e to the power i k dot x. Remember in the real Klein Gordon case I had we had this operator a k here and here a dagger k where a dagger was Hermitian conjugate of a. This we had to take because in that case this field phi was a real scalar field. Here phi is a complex scalar field. So, there is no reason for us to consider this operator here to be the Hermitian conjugate of this operator. So, this one is some other operator which is quite independent of this and I have denoted this to be b dagger k just for convenience. <coughs> this is the case then phi dagger of x is of course, the Hermitian conjugate of phi of x. So, this can be written as d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega times b of k e to the power minus i k dot x plus a dagger k e to the power i k dot x. Now, we can find what is phi dot and we can substitute it in the commutation relation here and just like the real Klein Gordon case, we can evaluate the commutator, do some integration, or we can express these a's and b's in terms of phi, phi dot, phi dagger, phi dot dagger, and finally evaluate the commutator. You can show that in this process, I will not work them out here when you evaluate the, the fundamental commutation relations, you will find that a k a dagger k prime commutator <coughs> is again as in the earlier case equal to 2 pi cube 2 omega times delta of k minus k prime. Here we have two sets of new operators b k b dagger k prime and the commutator is again equal to 2 pi cube 2 omega delta of k minus k prime. Then all other commutator, commutators when is a k a k prime commutator equal to 0 a dagger k a dagger k prime equal to 0 and similarly for b case and b dagger case. <coughs> you can find the Hamiltonian and the momentum operator for the system and then you can express them 
in terms of the operators A's and A daggers. It, uh, it turns out that the Hamiltonian for the system when expressed in terms of A's and A daggers is equal to d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega times omega A dagger k A k. But now we have also these operators B dagger and B. So I have B dagger k B k. This is the normal ordered Hamiltonian and similarly the momentum operator is given by d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega times k and a dagger k a k plus b dagger k b k again we can show that uh, these uh, a daggers and b daggers are creation operators whereas a's and b's are annihilation operators and there exists a ground state which is annihilated by all the annihilation operators so a k acting on 0 equal to 0 and b k again acting on 0 is equal to 0. Then the entire spectrum of the uh, 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 Hamiltonian is constructed by acting the creation operators on the vacuum. So, a dagger k acting on vacuum will give a one particle state. Similarly, b dagger k acting on the ground state will give another one particle state of a different kind and you can have two particle states and in general you can have n particle states here. You can construct the number operator. So, the number operator, so there are now you can see that there are two different types of particles. This one I will call as the particle of type A and this one I will call as the particle of type B. In a moment we will see what exactly they are, but uh, for the time being let us call this as particle of type A and this is particle of type B. So, you have corresponding number operators for particle of type A and also for particle of type B, I will denote them as N A, this is A dagger K A K and N A of K, N B of K, this is B dagger K B K. These have eigenvalues 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, these are the occupation numbers. You can see that the ground state has 0 occupation number. So, N A acting on this is 0 because there is an A to the right and A annihilates the ground state. Similarly, N B acting on this is also 0. Therefore, the ground state is the state of 0 particles and hence this is also the vacuum state. And uh, if you consider A k dagger acting on 0, this will have occupation number 1 and so on. So, this is one particle state which 
coincides with our earlier definition and so on. The Hamiltonian and momentum can be expressed in terms of uh, these occupation number operators. Trivially, I can write the energy momentum operator is this, which is d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega k mu times n a k plus n b k. So, all these things are very similar to our discussion in the real klein gordon case. Only thing is that there is an additional particle type which I call as the particle of type B. However, there is an important difference between the real klein gordon case and the complex klein gordon case. In the real klein gordon case, there was no global symmetry, there was no continuous global symmetry under which the Lagrangian was invariant. Whereas, in the complex klein gordon case, we have seen that the Lagrangian density is del mu phi dagger del mu phi minus m square phi dagger phi, which is invariant under a continuous global symmetry. If you consider phi going to e to the power i q phi, where q is a constant parameter and hence phi dagger going to e to the power minus i q phi dagger under this continuous symmetry the Lagrangian is invariant. So, therefore, Noether's theorem tells us that there exists a conserved charge here corresponding to this continuous symmetry which is not there in the case of real klein gordon field. So, there is a new observable in, in, in our complex klein gordon case, which is not there in the real klein gordon case. We will see what this new observable is. We can use Noether's method to compute what this charge is. I think we have computed it in one of these uh, uh, earlier lectures. And, uh, the Noether charge in this case is given by, I will denote this as q, this will be equal to i q times integration d cube x phi dagger del 0 phi minus del 0 phi dagger phi. Okay. You have to do normal ordering to get a physically sensible answer. What we will do is that we will put the mode expansion for phi and phi dagger here, evaluate the x integration and then we can express this q in terms of the creation and annihilation operators a dagger a and b dagger b. So, let us do that. Let us write again the expression for phi and uh, del 0 phi, phi is d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega a k i k dot x plus b dagger k e to the power i k dot x and hence phi dot of x is uh, equal to d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega times minus i omega times a k e to the power minus i k dot x minus b dagger k e to the power i k dot x. Phi dagger 
is the Hermitian conjugate of this. So, it will interchange A and B here and uh, same in this expression. So, let us do it anyway, phi dagger of x is uh, d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega b k e to the power minus i k dot x plus a dagger k e to the power i k dot x and hence phi dot of dagger of x is d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega times minus i omega times b k minus a dagger So, now we can substitute all the four expressions here in the expression for q and then we can evaluate the x integration. So, we will do a few steps then I will leave it as an exercise for you. So, for the second one, I am using the, the level integration variable here as k prime, whereas for the first operator, I will be using the integration variable as k in both these terms. When I do that, <coughs> what I get is phi dagger del 0 phi. So, minus i omega times minus i omega prime actually b b k e to the power minus i k dot x plus a dagger k e to the power i k dot x times del 0 phi which have minus i omega prime and then a k prime e to the power minus i k prime dot x minus b dagger k prime e to the power i k prime dot x. Then the second term which is minus i minus of minus i omega and uh, del 0 phi dagger which is b k e to the power minus i k dot x minus a dagger k e to the power i k dot x and then phi which is equal to a k e to the power i minus i k dot x plus b dagger k b dagger k e to the power i k dot x. So, what you can do now is you can multiply these terms, this one will give you four terms, similarly the second one will give you four terms and then you can evaluate the x integration. When you evaluate the x integration, it will give you a delta function and uh, <coughs> then you can evaluate one of these k integrations by using this delta function. You can see the following. So, for example, you consider here the first term here. The first term will give you integration d cube x 
d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega d cube k over 2 pi d cube k prime over 2 pi q 2 omega prime and b k a k prime and then e to the power minus i k plus k prime dot x. This is a, a product with eta mu nu, here the metric is eta mu nu, so it will give you two terms, one is e to the power minus i omega plus omega prime t, okay, and then e to the power i k plus k prime dot x. So, this x integration, integration of d cube x times this will give you a delta k plus k prime, okay. So, this delta k plus k prime, now you can integrate out this k prime, you can carry out the k prime integration, then you get a b k a of minus k and then there is a e to the power minus 2 i t, okay. This term, there will be an analogous term here, okay, which will give you b k a k and again e to the power minus 2 i t. Because of this minus sign here and because of the fact that b and a commute, you can show that this term here exactly cancels with this term. Okay. So, this way all the terms which contains either two annihilation operators or two creation operators, they will cancel with each other. Only term which will remain in this integration is the one which is one creation and one annihilation operator. So, from here you get b k b dagger k prime term and a k a dagger k prime term and the same expression you will get from here, instead of cancelling they will add up. And finally, you have to remember that you are using normal ordering. So, ultimately you get uh, after normal ordering, it is uh, a dagger a minus b dagger b. a dagger a will come with a plus sign and b dagger b will come with a minus sign. So, when you carry out the integration, what you will get for q here is the following. At the end of the day, you will find that this is q times integration d cube k over 2 pi cube 2 omega times a dagger k a k minus b dagger k b k. You understand the origin of this minus sign here, right? This minus sign here is very important and you can see how this minus sign comes here once again. There is this minus sign comes here because there is a minus here in this term or equivalently there is a minus here and this minus here comes because you have del 0 phi so, you have phi dagger and del 0 phi and then this time derivative here brings you a minus sign here. And because of this minus sign, in the entire term when you evaluate this product here, you get a a dagger a with a plus sign, whereas you get a b b dagger with a minus sign and with the normal ordering prescription, this b b dagger becomes b dagger b. So, that is how you get a minus here. But uh, now what you can see, you can now consider let us say one particle state of a particle of type A. So, a one particle state of a particle of type A is given by this. Now, you look at what you get by acting Q on it. Q on this will give you a charge which is plus q times a dagger k acting on this. 
So, so this is an eigenstate of the charge operator with a charge plus q. <coughs> this plus here comes because of this plus sign here. Whereas, if you now consider a particle of type B and you, you try to find what is the eigenvalue of this operator q here for such state. So, B dagger k 0 acting on this will give you an eigenvalue which is minus q. B dagger k 0. So, this one particle states all are eigenstates of this charge operator q, but the particles of type A have charge plus q, whereas the particles of type K, type B are having charge minus q. So, therefore, the particles of type A are nothing but positively charged particles, whereas the particles of type B are negatively charged particles. This is what which was not there in the real klein gordon case and we, we have this in the complex klein gordon case. So, a complex klein gordon field can describe particles which where there are two types of charges. For example, a, syst a system of pi plus and pi minus, here the pi ions, uh, this is a positively charged pi ion, this is a negatively charged pi ion this can be described by a complex klein gordon field. However, this need not be electric charge. You can for example, consider hypercharge. You can use this q to denote hypercharge and you have a system of k 0, k 0 bar with hypercharges plus and minus 1, which can, can also be described by a complex klein gordon field. So, to summarize, we have quantized real as well as complex klein gordon field and we have seen that uh, we can find the entire spectrum. These particles are bosons because they obey Bose-Einstein statistics and also we have seen the importance of uh, normal ordering. Uh, we, we, if you consider blindly the Hamiltonian it gives you the answers which is, which is nonsensical and hence you need time ordering to get a, a sensible answer. Uh, and then we, we have seen, uh, we have also introduced, uh, you, ne you need normal ordering to get a sensible answer. Then also we have introduced concept of time ordering and then we have found uh, uh, integral representation for uh, uh, the vacuum expectation value of the time order product, which is uh, the Feynman propagator. We have also discussed causality in this case and then uh, we have seen that uh, the uh, operators commute if, uh, if they are at uh, space like separation. Okay? So, so, next class we will introduce interaction and then we will see how particles interact with each other.